I built one of the strongest pals in the entire game with a skill that you can only get now for a limited time. This pal absolutely deletes bosses. I would act fast here guys because this is definitely broken and it's definitely getting patched. Maybe even this week. So you think you have the perfect shadow beak because you bred one like this with Legend, Musclehead, Ferocious, and Lord of the Underworld. You got it to level 50 and you max condensed it with 116 other shadow beak to get it to its max potential. Well, if you think that, you'd be wrong. And you're wrong because yours doesn't have this exclusive skill called Dark Wisp, which just wreaks utter havoc on anything in its path, including this Palladius, which has among the highest HP stats in the entire game. Dark Wisp is actually a secret skill that only the Shadow Beak Tower boss is supposed to know. So you're not supposed to be able to get this ability on your own pals, but I, I found a way and I'm going to teach you how to do it for yourself. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Dauntus here. We're about to get a little bit naughty here because I'm going to show you all the dirty tricks you need to get this for yourself. And I'm going to let you in on kind of some of the tips that I don't really see any of the other content creators talking about in terms of getting it quicker or methods to make sure you don't make any mistakes. So let's make this quick and let's make this easy. Subscribe. We already know that we can pass down passive skills, but you probably didn't know that you can also pass down attacks or active skills. So what we need to do is we first need to catch a tower boss and pass down its secret tower boss attack. You didn't hear this from me, but what you want to do is fast travel to the small settlement, give this guy a party favor, quickly fast travel to the shadow beak tower boss up in the upper left hand corner of the map, put on some cold resistance armor so you don't die, and jump down. As you can see, the guards are still pretty, pretty upset. Enter the boss fight. All you want to do here is line of sight the guards so that the boss gets hit by their weapons. And as soon as he goes to the corner, throw any pal sphere at him, and congratulations, you're a criminal. 100% success rate, even though it says zero. Immediately after you do that, that, click alt tab or pull out your cell phone and type this into YouTube. When you get here, you're going to see like a little white or a red button. Click that and then immediately fast travel back to your base. Gotcha. Once you're back at your base, go ahead and inspect the boss that you just caught. Oh, but he doesn't know Dark Wisp. Oh, no. It's OK. He actually knows the skill. What you want to do is click into the active skills and not to worry. Dark Wisp is in there, along with everything else. Go ahead and remove the other active skills because the only one you want to pass down is Dark Wisp, and I have a suspicion that if it's the only active skill, it has a better chance of being passed down. That's just my thought. Once you've done that, you're done with step one. Now for step two, you're going to need yourself a perfect shadow beak in terms of passive skills, and the skills you need are Legend, Lord of the Underworld, Ferocious, and Musclehead. Please don't let this discourage you. It's actually not that difficult to get. For a more detailed guide on how to do that, you can refer back to my breeding guide but for those of you that understand breeding already here's the brief description on how to get it first you need to go and catch yourself a necromist because necromist actually already has two of the four passive skills that you need if you didn't already know every legendary pal that you catch in the wild already comes with the passive skill legend in addition to its exclusive passive skill that buffs its own damage type so necromist already has legend and lord of the underworld which are the two skills we want to pass down to shadow Beak. this is basically already half the equation Necromist can be captured in the very northeastern part of the map where Palladius is marked right here. They actually spawn as a pair, so they're, they're kind of a headache to deal with, but it's a fun fight. According to Kimpton's breeding calculator, link in the description, if you go to the bottom to Pal Shortest Path Calculator and you select Necromist as the parent and Shadowbeak as the desired child, it'll show you all of the paths necessary to pass down the abilities Legend and Lord of the Underworld from Necromist and eventually down to Shadow Beak. So in my application, I'm gonna be breeding Necromus with a beacon to create Astagon, because Beacon actually spawns right next to Necromus. It just makes it easy. And then you're gonna bring that Astagon with a Kitsune to create your Shadow Beak. I actually got pretty lucky here because this Beacon doesn't have any passive skills, which makes it super easy if you didn't know, because if you have a pal that has no passive skills, it's more likely to adopt all of the skills from its partner to pass down. So in my application, I bred these two together and created an Astagon, and I got, guys, I got super lucky with this one. It came with a random ferocious skill, which is one of the four abilities I eventually want on my Shadow Beak. If you remember from the breeding calculator, in order to create yourself a Shadow Beak, you need to breed Astagon with a Kitsune. So in your application, you're going to be grabbing Lord of the Underworld and Legend from Necromus, and then you're going to be breeding that Astagon that has those two with a Kitsune that has Musclehead and Ferocious. Now, I got lucky and my Astagon had Ferocious on it. 
but it's really not that difficult if you use that calculator to get any two passive skills on a pal. So all you have to do is find a way to get Ferocious and Musclehead on a Kitsune with the calculator and then breed these two together until you eventually get yourself your own Shadow Beak. As a quick disclaimer, you're going to need yourself a female Shadow Beak because for whatever reason, whenever you catch a tower boss, they're all males. I did it that many times? But the wonderful thing about all these tower bosses is they have no passive skills, which if you remember makes them perfect breeding partners because they don't have any passives that will interfere with, let's just call it the bloodline. Once you have both of the parents set up, all you have to do is breed them together until you get something like this, a Shadow Beak that has all four of the perfect passive skills and Dark Wisp. Please note that if yours does not have Dark Wisp, you need to actually move on and keep breeding because if it doesn't know Dark Wisp at level 1, it will never learn it through leveling. So if you see this, you've struck absolute gold. But listen, you're not done yet because you still have to add Divine Disaster and Dark Laser to have three powerful attacks all over 150 power. But pay very close attention to what I'm about to tell you because you could mess this whole thing up like I did and spend the next entire day paying for your mistake. I literally got the perfect Shadow Beak after something like the fifth egg, which is insane. And I was so blinded by excitement and I just was so excited to get this thing leveled up that I went into the menu, I cranked up the experience to 20x, I killed the boss to instantly get it to level 50 so that it could learn Divine Disaster. But the only problem is that there's actually a bug right now where sometimes if you level up your pals instantly to level 50, it could actually cause them to bug and not learn any new abilities. So I had myself this perfect Shadow Beak, I got it to level 50, I started condensing it, and then I realized I tried to teach it Divine Disaster and it can't learn it because it bugged. And guys, you need Divine Disaster because that's Shadow Beak's signature move and it's what makes it the most broken pal in the entire game, both from a PvE perspective and from a PvP perspective when it finally does release. Divine Disaster has insane damage, it has insane coverage, it has insane tracking, which basically makes it unavoidable, which is why people think it's going to be so good in PvP, and it's also a fantastic utility because it can either create gaps with movement or it can close gaps. That's why people think this pal is going to be the best pal in the entire game. So needless to say, I made a huge mistake don't do that. Level up your own Shadow Beak slow and steady so that it learns Divine Disaster. I think it's something like after level 40 or 43 is when you can finally learn it. Once you have yourself a Shadow Beak with Dark Wisp and Divine Disaster, all you need to add now is Dark Laser. If you didn't know, the move Dark Laser can actually be plucked from a skill tree. I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret that you're definitely going to thank me for. There is a website called mapgenie.io, link in the description, that shows you the entire Pow World map and every single resource in the entire game and its exact location. All you have to do is simply go into the search bar and type in skill fruit tree, and it will show you every single skill fruit tree on the entire map. So all you have to do is type that in and use this map to navigate to every skill fruit tree in the entire game until you get yourself a dark laser fruit. Okay, we're almost there. So now that you have your perfect shadow beak with dark wisp, dark laser, and Divine Disaster with all four of the passive skills and you got it to level 50 slowly. Now you just need to condense all those extra Shadow Beak into it to power it up to the max. Then you're going to want to go up to the Anubis statue and use Pal Souls to power it up even further. After that, go to your kitchen and you're going to want to create Ikthyrdir Loco Moco with the ingredients below. Ikthyrdir Loco Moco actually increases attack by 20% for a period of time, which is pretty crazy. And now you just need one more thing. Hookertes is certainly the most insane damage addition because with its partner skill ability Dark Knowledge level 5, while in a team it increases the attack power of Dark Pals, which is the signature damage type of Shadow Beak. To illustrate this, Shadow Beak's attack is 1790 by default. Let's see what happens when we add one. It goes to 2000. When you add another one, it goes to 2200. When you add another one, it goes to 2421. And when you add the final one, it goes to 2632. After feeding it the Ikthyrdir Lokomoko, its attack is now 3100. 158. That's crazy. But Dauntus, how did you max condense so many Hookertees? That sounds like it would take a long time. Yes, it did, but it was totally worth it. And there's a couple ways you can do it. First, you can do what I did and go absolutely crazy and breed until you get something like Vanguard and Stronghold Strategist, which actually gives you a 10% increase to player attack and player defense. So if I have four of them, my player's attack and defense are both increased by 40%. What you can do is you can just keep breeding them together until you get those two skills that you want, which is actually not difficult 
difficult to do. There are no other skills that increase your player stats. So really all you need are just those two, Vanguard and Stronghold Strategist. Everything else is just kind of a bonus. After you breed up a bunch of them, you could just condense the ones with the passive skills you don't want into the ones that have Vanguard and Stronghold Strategist. And that's how I got all my Hooker Tees. But if you don't want to spend a ton of time breeding, there is another approach, which is obviously the more violent option. And now you have yourself a walking delete button with wings. Good day.